recording. Good afternoon, Shabbat Shalom. I'm Shilly Ka, Rabbi Vincent P. Adams, and I'm co-founder of Vets IM, Tree of Life, along with my lovely wife, Nevia Leslie Adams. And I want to welcome you to our afternoon Shabbat celebration uh, this uh, Saturday afternoon, February 2nd, 2013. Uh, before I move on, I just want to say those of you who have been with us past few weeks, past few months, know that we're in a quad series titled The Trinity, The Olive Bay, Tennessee for All, and Biblical Astronomy and Astrology. Uh, as a matter of fact, the past couple of weeks, thank you, we have been showing the connection between Biblical Astronomy and Astrology and Healing. Um, the Ruach Okades placed it on my heart to start teaching Tai Chi and movement and meditation in order to facilitate healing and also to um, have this be an outreach of our ministry. You know, uh, a step toward, uh, not a step toward, but a form of evangelism. And because of that, I scheduled the class uh, on Fridays at 5 p.m., just before our Shabbat celebration. And originally, in my mind, I thought it was a good idea to do that because hopefully people will, will linger after the class and stay for the service. So this became, you know, was sort of a, a tool of evangelism. But the Lord revealed a, a, a deeper meaning behind it. One was the fact that it's Shabbat, what better time to teach and promote healing than on Shabbat? The anointing is available for healing on Shabbat. You know, if you go back and you study the old healing crusades of Oral Roberts and uh, men and women, uh, you know, like Oral Roberts, you will notice a, a startling similarity between all the revivals. Most of the time, the revival started on a Friday evening. Now, they didn't know it that they were keeping the Shabbat. They were just doing it for practicality because people get off work on Friday, uh, you know, don't have to go anywhere Saturday and, you know, on Sunday. So what better time to start a healing revival than Friday evening? But one of the reasons for the great success of these revivals was the, I believe, was the fact that they were started on Friday evening, which is Shabbat. There is an anointing available for healing on Shabbat. So after I had decided, the Holy Spirit placed it on my heart or on my mind to begin teaching the class. And then I thought, okay, let me get clever. I'll make it on Friday evening at 5 p.m., uh, Saturday morning at 7 a.m., and Sunday morning at 7 a.m., thinking that I'm being clever, I'm going to have it uh, where it'll kind of overlap or run into the uh, Shabbat service on Saturday. But the Holy, you know, a lot of times we think we have a bright idea, and it's really the Holy Ghost. And we may not realize the deeper implications of what we're doing right away. And over a period of time after I made the decision to have the class on that day, Friday evening and Saturday morning, then the Ruach Okades revealed it to me that that is a time of healing. You know, what better way to evangelize than the way that you know, that Yeshua did by healing people. What better way to bring people into the kingdom than doing uh, what we have come to call today power evangelism and the healing of people and bring it, bringing them in, into, the, into the kingdom. So we had the first class yesterday and another class this morning and it was a beautiful class. And I really want to 
experiment with even having the class say, not so much having the class, but allowing people to come in and meditate, say it right now as I'm teaching or when we're doing praise and worship or when we're doing the uh, Torah reading. Allow them to meditate for that time for it takes about a half hour to read the Torah in Hebrew. Let them meditate during that time. When the actual word of God is coming down in Hebrew. This kind of new new idea to facilitate healing and to promote you know evangelism instead of the you know the typical things that we do for evangelism stand out in the corner and yell at people that don't want to hear us in the first place um, so we here at SIM you know we try to, to be open-minded but biblically founded and rooted of course so um, today this afternoon we're going to have the conclusion of the um, biblical astronomy and, and astrology in a connection with healing uh, as far as I can tell uh, I want to get back to where we had left off back uh, the first week in December and get back on, on, on that track if, if the rock allows me yeah. but a couple of questions came up when I was telling people about having uh, the movement, call it the M&M class, the movement and meditation class on, you know, on Friday evening. And someone said to me, how is that not, how is, isn't that work? How, you know, how is that not work? And, you know, that's a fair question. Uh, that's a fair question. And I already had the answer. You know, I, I knew that we were, uh, it was going to be a part of healing and evangelism, but how would I explain that to someone biblically? And then, of course, we get into uh, the reason why I decided to have it that way, as I just explained the reason why. Anyway, but let's uh, look in our Bibles at Exodus chapter 31, verse 17. When you get this, say amen. Open your Bibles to Exodus 31, chapter 31, verse 17. And this is going to be our only Old Testament scripture, so make sure you keep your Roth Bible handy before we go into the New Testament. Amen. Yeah, okay. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. Wow. What does that say? It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. Someone read that to me out of the uh, restora true name restoration scriptures. It is an odd between me and the children of Israel, the long time. Come up. Come up closer. Stand next to the mic and read that. Go ahead. It is an odd between me and the children of Israel, the long time for six days. Yahweh made the Shemayim and the earth. And on the seventh day, he rested and was refreshed. And the seventh day. Okay, thank you. Now... What I, you know, we've all heard, you know, that he, you know, God rested on the Sabbath. And that's really not the best translation that we can have there. A better translation was he, he ceased from his work. He stopped his work on the Sabbath rather than uh, he rested on the Sabbath. Because it actually means to cease, to desist, to stop. So on the Sabbath, God stopped or ceased from his work. And the reason why I say that that's a poor translation is because people have always 
called the Sabbath a day of rest. And as a little kid, I always, you know, I, I hated that. Because how can you say it's a day of rest when you got me sitting in church all day? How is that resting? I have to sit up all day in church and listen to somebody for two, three hours. You know, and some people go to church all day just as now we keep the Sabbath all day from sundown Friday night to sundown Saturday. So I've even expanded in my adult life. So how can I call that a day of rest? Actually, we work pretty hard on the Sabbath, don't we? You know, we have to get things set up. We prepare food for Oneg and fellowship. And we try to make sure we have the music together. We have this right and that right. And, or, you know, we really go all out on the Sabbath. So it's not a day of rest. But it is a day that we cease from doing our own work and our own activities whether they're work, fun, or pleasure. So it's not a day of rest. It's a day that we cease from doing our own work. But now there's another component to this, as we see here at the end of the, uh, of the verse here. It said, on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. That word was refreshed. I, I, I think it's an accurate translation, and at the same time, it's a poor one. It's the word uh, nafas, which refers to one of, uh, according to rabbinical literature, <coughs> that's one of the levels of our spirit. Nafesh. It's, it's a level of the spirit. Now, it can also be translated to take a breath or to refresh oneself. But it has something to do with the spirit. So, it, it you know, God ceased from his work on the Sabbath day, but after he ceased from his work, he was re-energized in his spirit. He was recharged, rejuvenated, empowered anointed after he ceased from his work. So one of the reasons why we do the things that we do on the Sabbath is so that we can have this rejuvenation spiritually, which rejuvenates our body. Because remember, we've gone over this in the past couple of weeks. It's the spirit that quickens. It's the spirit that gives life. We talked about that last night, that when the spirit comes, it gives life. It gives animation. So on this day, and remember, the Bible says that God sanctified this day and that he blessed it. Blessed means that it was empowered with something. It was given something special that the other days don't have. The Sabbath was blessed which means it was empowered and anointed with something. And it was sanctified, meaning that it was set apart from all the other days of the week. So it was blessed, empowered, anointed, charged, electrified, whatever you want to call it, and it was set apart. And here in Exodus 31, 17, we know that even God, was re-energized on this day or refreshed. So there is something on the Sabbath. Now here we're touching on biblical astronomy and astrology. Anytime we, I'm saying this again, anytime we have a special day and that special day occurs either weekly, monthly, you know, weekly would be the Sabbath, as I said last night. Weekly would be the Sabbath. Monthly would be Rosh Kadesh, the first day of the biblical month. Yearly, it's Pesach, Shavuot, Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, Tabernacles, Hanukkah, 
and pure. And we even have a daily recycle. We have special times during the day. It's sunrise, well, sunset, sunrise, midday, and midnight. So anytime we have these reoccurring cycles, we're getting into biblical astronomy and biblical astronomy, I mean astrology. Whether you like that word or not, astrology. Now, not the astrology with, you know, that you read your horoscope in the paper, uh, that sort of thing. I'm not talking about that. What I'm referring to is the fact that there is a connection between the constellations and the, the movement of, of the planets and the stars and us. And I don't want to go back into it. I, I've covered it pretty uh, extensively the past few weeks, maybe even the past few months. So go back and listen to those other teachings uh, about, about that. But again, you know, and I'm just hammering it over and over again. There is something special about Shabbat. Whether you feel it or not, but if you come expecting and seeking and come with faith, you will receive something special on Shabbat, whether you can feel it or not. Shabbat is special. It is a special time, and it reoccurs every seven days. Therefore, the connection between astronomy and astrology. What happens every seven days? What is in the universe? What, what stars are in position every seven days? What constellations are in position? You know, what's the alignment in the Earth realm every seven days in the universe? What's the alignment every day? at morning, noon, sunset, and midnight. Or as the, the order of the Bible would, would put it in, evening, midnight, sunrise, and midday. Remember, God is intensely purposeful. There is nothing left to chance. The position of the sun, the stars, and the moon Have a, you know, have a purpose. As I've always said, God is intensely purposeful. There are no mere icons, rituals, or symbols in our faith. Everything has meaning, purpose, and power. Even the constellations. Now that doesn't mean that we bow down to them. We don't worship the constellations or the moon or the sun. We worship God. We worship the creator. We worship the creator, not the created things. And we're meant to rise above the influence of the stars. But the Bible says that they, you know, in Job it says that they do have an influence. They do place restrictions on the earth and those on the earth. But as believers, as born again believers, we overcome the power of the stars. But it doesn't hurt to know what we're overcoming. Because maybe sometimes we can use it to our advantage. So once again, there's a connection there's a connection uh, between the Sabbath and biblical astronomy and astrology because it's a special day. And there's a connection between that and our, our healing. As it says here, he rested and was refreshed. Or it should say, he ceased from his work and he was refreshed. And that's what we're doing now. We're receiving an anointing right now to carry on through the rest of the week. Let's go to Matthew chapter 10.
excuse me, chapter 12, Matthew chapter 12, verse 10, chapter 12, verse 10. I've already said that the Sabbath is special. Use Roth for the New Testament. Go ahead and use your Roth button. I've already uh, pointed out that the Sabbath is special, biblically. It's been blessed. It's been set apart. You cease from your work. You are refreshed, anointed, energized. Now, what's, what's the connection between the Sabbath and our health now? Remember, the title of this part of our quad series is the connection between biblical astronomy and biblical astrology and healing. So why, you know, this, this will answer why our movement and meditation class is on the Sabbath. Okay? In chapter 12, verse 10. Chapter 12, verse 10. All right. And behold, there was a man which had his hand with him. And they asked him, say, saying, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath days that they might accuse him? And he said unto them, What man shall there be among you that shall have one sheep? And if it fall into a pit on the Sabbath day, will he not lay hold on it and lift it out? How much then a man better than a sheep? Wherefore, it is lawful to do well on the Sabbath days. Then saith he to the man, Stretch forth thine hand. And he stretched it forth, and it was restored whole like as the other. Now, as we see, when we begin to go through these scriptures that I'm uh, going to show you here, most of the miracles, or quite a few of the miracles and healings that Yeshua performed were on the Sabbath. It's no coincidence that many of the miracles and healings that were performed by Yeshua were on the Sabbath or on the feast days. The man that Yeshua healed of blindness was during the Feast of Hanukkah or the Feast of Lights, or the Feast of Rededication, as they're called. Remember Hanukkah has three names, Hanukkah being one, Feast of Lights being the second, and the Feast of the Rededication of the Temple being the third, because it commemorated the rededication of the Temple after the Greeks had defiled it by sacrificing hogs in the Temple. Every, almost everything uh, probably 80, 90 percent, maybe even 100. I'm, I'm not, but a high percentage of all of the miracles and healings that Yeshua performed were done on the Sabbath and on the feast days. He was born, he was conceived during Hanukkah, he was born during Tabernacles. He was crucified during Pesach. He rose on the Sabbath. And he, he also rose on a feast day, the feast, uh, the, the feast of, of first fruits. The church was born, uh, what we call uh, Pentecost is actually um, Shavuot. The Ruach HaKodesh was given to the church on a feast day. Almost everything was done on Sabbath. And remember, feast days or appointed times are, are, are a type of Sabbath. So almost everything is done on a Sabbath. And most of the miracles that were performed by Yeshua were done at appointed times. Either it, was, either it was doing a watch. Remember it says, he came to them walking upon the water. 
in the middle of the last watch. Remember the watches are appointed time, times of prayer. Almost everything revolves around the movement of the sun, the moon, the stars, and the planets, the constellations, e almost everything. You can't deny it. You may not like the you may not like it, but it it that's when it happened. There's a, a strong connection between biblical, I'll say it, I'll call it biblical astrology and biblical astrology and healing and, and, and everything, miracles, everything. Most theologians believe that Yeshua, you know, he was, like I say, he was conceived during Hanukkah, born during Tabernacles, crucified during Pesach, rose on the feast day of first fruits. Most theologians believe that he is going to come back during a feast day also. And they believe it's going to be Yom Kippur. He's done everything else on a feast day. Now, which feast day of what year, no one knows. But as I just read here, it was on the Sabbath, and Yeshua healed a man's, you know, crippled hand, became whole on the Sabbath. Verse, verse 12, how much then is a man better than a sheep? We just read that. Verse 13, then saith to the, to the man, stretch forth thine hand, and he stretched it forth, and it was restored whole like as the other. Then the Pharisees went out and held a council against him how they might destroy him. But when Yeshua knew it, he withdrew himself from thence, and great multitudes followed him, and he healed them all. This is all on the Sabbath. Great multitudes. But when Yeshua knew it, he withdrew himself from thence, and great multitudes followed him, and he healed them all. Wow. And he charged them, that they should not make him known, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Elijah the prophet, saying, Behold my servant whom I have chosen, my beloved, in whom my soul is well pleased. I will put my spirit upon him, and he shall show judgment to the Gentiles. Okay. Let's um, go to Mark chapter 6. Not only did Yeshua heal on the Sabbath, say he healed great multitudes on the Sabbath. Mark chapter 6. Verse 1. Oh, just a sec. Verse 2. And when the Sabbath day was come, he began to teach in the synagogue. You know, when I hold the movement and meditation class, I'm going to be teaching. Okay? I'm going to be teaching the Word of God as I teach these movements and the meditations. And when the Sabbath day was come, he began to teach in the synagogue. And many hearing him were astonished, saying, from whence have this man these things? And what wisdom is this which is given unto him that even such mighty works are wrought by his hands? Now this is on the Sabbath and it says that there were mighty works being wrought while he was teaching. Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James and Joseph and of Judah and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they were offended at him. But Yeshua said unto them, A prophet is not without honor, but in his own country, and amongst his own kin, and in his own 
house. And he could there do no mighty work, save that he laid his hands upon a few sick folk and healed them. And he marveled because of their unbelief. And he went around about the villages teaching. Okay. So even God himself is hindered by negative thoughts, negative talk, lack of faith and unbelief. This was on the Sabbath. So he, he couldn't do any more mighty works because of their unbelief. But still, on the Sabbath, he is healing. Again, we have the mention of the Sabbath and his teaching and him healing on the Sabbath. Let's go down to verse uh, 6. No, no, excuse me. Let's go to Luke chapter 6. Luke 6. Luke 6, verse 6. And it came to pass also on another Sabbath that he entered into the synagogue and taught. And there was a man whose right hand was with him. Now, this is the same story that we began with in Matthew in the Synoptic Gospel. And the scribes and Pharisees watched him, whether he would heal on the Sabbath day that they might find an accusation against him. But he knew their thoughts and said to the man which had the withered hand, Rise up and stand forth in the midst. And he arose and stood forth. Then said Yeshua unto them, I will ask you one thing. Is it lawful on the Sabbath days to do good or to do evil, to save life or to destroy it? And looking round about upon them all, he said unto the man, Stretch forth thine hand. And he did so. And his hand was restored whole as the other. And they were filled with madness and communed one with another what they might do to him. My duty is sure. And it came to pass in those days that he went out into a mountain to pray and continued all night in prayer to God. So, why shouldn't I teach the class on the Sabbath about healing? It's the perfect day. It's, it's, to do it to do it up during any other day would be almost ridiculous. Can you see that through the scriptures? I mean, if if we're going to try to get people healed, what day should we try to get people healed on the most? Sabbath. On the Sabbath. I mean, we can do it any day, of course, but if we can, if we can schedule something, it makes perfect sense to do it on the Sabbath, because that's when Yeshua did it, on the Sabbath, okay? All right, let's go to Luke chapter 13, verse 10, Luke 13. Verse 10, when you get there, say amen. amen. And he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bowed together and could in no wise lift herself. You know, you ever seen old people that walk bent over and they can't stand up straight? Well, that's what problem with this woman in her spine, in her back. Okay, verse, let's read that verse 11 again. And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity 18 years, and was bowed together, and could in no wise lift up herself. And when Yeshua saw her, he called to her. He called. Oh, okay. And when Yeshua saw her, he called her to him, and said unto her, unto her Woman, Thou art loose from thine infirmity. And he laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. And the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation 
because that Yeshua had healed on the Sabbath day and said unto the people, There are six days in which men ought to work. In them therefore come and be healed, and not on the Sabbath day. The Lord then answered him and said, Thou hypocrite, doth not each one of you on the Sabbath loose his ox or ass from the stall and lead him away to water? And ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, who Satan hath bound, lo, these eighteen years, be loosed from this bond on the Sabbath day? And when he had said these things, all his adversaries were ashamed, and all the people rejoiced for all the glorious things that were done by him. It said all the glorious things. So he not only healed the woman, but there were some other things that he did as well. As I said, they rejoiced in all the glorious things that he had done. So apparently there were some other miracles, some other healings, and some other things, and some other teachings that made them glorify God and made them uh, rejoice. Again, when did he do it? On the Sabbath day. On the Sabbath day. Looks like he was making a point to do things on the Sabbath. He was trying to let us know there is a special healing. There is an anoint. There is something available on the Sabbath that you need to take advantage of. Because what did he say? Should not she be loosed on the Sabbath day? He was trying to help us. He was trying to give us a clue. Come and ask God. That's why we have the throne room and healing service in the morning. Because we want to pray for healing on the Sabbath day. We want to use the Sabbath for healing. That's why I'm thinking about letting people come in when we're having on eggs and meditate and ask for healing. So that we can take advantage, you know, not of our rituals and our set times, but take available of this astronomical event, this astronomical and astrological event called the Sabbath day. It lasts 24 hours, sundown Friday night to sundown Saturday. You know, if somebody comes for healing at 12 o'clock, what, what should I tell them? Hey, you're too late. We had the throne room and healing service at 9 a.m. You need to get up early. Is that what I should tell them? What should I do? <clears throat> should pray for them. It's the Sabbath. You know, Yeshua didn't say, hey, well, you know, uh, in the morning on the Sabbath, he said on the Sabbath. I mean, we try to give people notice. We try to give people warning by having the throne room and healing service and calling it, you know, such. So people, you know, know to come on out. We're going to be hitting it hard and heavy at that time. But if someone shows up later, you know, we don't turn them away. We're open all day. You know, Yeshua, you know, and the heavenly hosts are they're available all day. Okay. Luke 13. Let's take a look now. Let's go to John chapter 5. Get there, say amen. amen. Okay. John chapter 5, verse 9. And immediately the man, okay, let's go up a little. Let's start at verse 1. After this, there was a feast of the Jews. Uh oh. When did I say miracles happen? What? Sabbath and feast days. Okay. 
After this, there was a feast of the Jews. I wonder which one it was. And Yeshua went up to Jerusalem. Now there is at Jerusalem, by the sheep market, a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of impotent folk. You know what impotent means? People with no, impotent means no power, no vigor. Okay? So it was a great multitude of impotent folks. It, was, uh, it says, in, the, in these lay, on these five porches, in these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, of blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the war. For an angel went down at a certain season, at a certain season, had to be on a feast day or on a Sabbath, okay? On a certain season. Now, what are seasons tied to? What? Yeah, but what are the feasts tied to? What? Appointed times. What are appointed times tied to? Constellations. What? Constellation. Constellation, biblical astronomy and astrology. Okay. So there was a certain day, a, you know, it was during a feast day. And the reason why all these people were there, because the angel came down during these appointed times, during the feast day. So the people were there waiting for the angel to come and trouble the waters. On the feast day. Okay. For an angel went down at a certain season. Into the pool. And troubled the water. Whosoever then first. After the troubling of the water. Stepped in. Was made whole. Of whatsoever disease he had. And a certain man was there. Which had an infirmity. Thirty and eight years. And when Yeshua saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long term, a long time in that case, he said unto him, Wilt thou be made whole? Basically, do you want to be made whole? The impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. But while I am coming, another steppeth down before me. Yeshua said unto him, Rise, take up thy bed and walk. And immediately the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked. And on the same day was the Sabbath. So not only was it a feast day, but it's what the Jews called a high holy day because it fell on the Sabbath. So you had, you had a double anointing. You had a feast day that fell on the Sabbath. You know, so you had, you know, you had a double whammy going on. A double, you know, a double team of the Holy Ghost. You know, the angel came down during the feast day. Remember what it said in verse 1? It says it was a feast of the Jews. And it said it was, you know, you know, five porches, you know, five porches just filled with sick people waiting to be healed. Waiting for the angel to come down. And the angel was coming down on a feast day and on a Sabbath. And Yeshua healed him again on the Sabbath. The Jews therefore said unto him that was cured. It is a Sabbath day. It is not lawful for thee to carry thy bed. He answered them, He that made me whole, the same said unto me, Take up thy bed and walk. Then asked them, they asked them, then they asked, okay. then asked they him, What man is that which said unto thee, Take up thy bed and walk? And he that was healed was not who it was, for Yeshua had conveyed himself away a multitude 
being in that place. Afterward, Yeshua findeth him. Afterward, Yeshua findeth him in the temple and said unto him, Behold, thou art made whole. Sin no more. At least a worse thing come up, come unto thee. Now that's a clue too. He had been sick 38 years, right? And what did Yeshua say to him? Sin no more. So one way to get sick or become infirm is to sin. People are sinning. Some people don't even know that they're sinning. They don't know that they're making themselves sick. He said, you know, if you keep this up, it's going the next one you've been you haven't been able to, to move 38 years. If you if you keep it up, the wrong thing, something worse is gonna come. The man departed and told the Jews that it was Yeshua which had made him whole. And therefore did the Jews persecute Yeshua and sought to slay him because he had done these things on the Sabbath day. But well, Yeshua answered them, My father worketh here too, and I work. So on the Sabbath, Yahweh is working. He said, Hey, my father, you know, God is working, so I'm working. So we know that on the Sabbath, God is working. So we should be working. Now notice here, it didn't say, um, you know, God is resting. So I'm resting. It's not a day of rest. It's a day that God does some mighty works. So we should be working. That's important. That's from the Holy Ghost. You got that free. Let's look at that again. Therefore the Jews sought more to kill him because he not only had broken the Sabbath, but also, okay, but also said that God was his father, making himself equal with God. Those who don't believe in the Trinity, it just said that he made himself equal with God. God the Father, God the Holy Ghost, equal. Verse 17 again, but Yeshua answered them, my father worketh here too, and I work. My father worketh, and I work. That's why I have the movement and meditation class on the Sabbath, because that's when God is working. That's when I should be working. That's when I should be ministering as well. Amen. Glory to God. Well, that's, that's awesome. Let's go to uh, John chapter 9, verse 14. Let's go above it. Let's go up John chapter. Let's go up to verse one and read down. Make sure we don't we don't miss anything. Okay. Verse nine. John chapter 9, verse 1. We get there, say amen. amen. And as Yeshua passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. And as Yeshua passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? 
Yeshua answered, Neither hath this man sinned nor his parents, but that the works of God should be manifest in him. I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day, the night coming, when no man can work. Now, I've read that scripture many times. Verse 4, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day, the night cometh when no man can work. I believe by the Holy Ghost that what that scripture, verse 4, means is I need to do this while it is still the Sabbath because the night is coming. And the opportunity, the anointing, the open window, the, the, you know, the open window won't be there anymore. I should do this healing. I should do this while it is still the Sabbath. Because the night is coming. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle, and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay, and said unto him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is, by the interpretation, sin. He went his way, therefore, and washed, and came seen. The neighbors, therefore, and they which, and they which before had seen him that he was blind said is not this he that sat and begged some said this is he others said he is like him but he said i am he therefore said they unto him how were thine eyes thine eyes open and he answered and said a man that is called yeshua made clay and anointed mine eyes and said unto me, Go to the pool of Siloam and watch. And I went and watched, and I received sight. Then said they unto him, Where is he? He said, I know not. They brought to the Pharisees him that aforetime was blind. And it was the Sabbath day. Verse 14. And it was the Sabbath day when Yeshua made the clay and opened his eyes. Then again, the Pharisees also asked him how he had received his sight. He said unto them, he put clay upon my eyes and I washed and do see. Therefore said some of the Pharisees, this man is not of God because he keepeth not the Sabbath day. Others said, how can a man that is a sinner do such miracles? And there was a division among them. Then say unto the blind man again, What sayest thou of him, that he hath opened thine eyes? He said, He is a prophet. But the Jews did not believe concerning him, that he had been blind and received his sight, until they called his parents, till they called the parents of him that had received his sight. And they asked him, saying, Is this your son, who you say was born blind? How then doth he now see? His parent answered them and said, We know that this is our son, and that he was born blind. But by what means he now seeth, we know not. Or who have opened his eyes, we know not. He is of age, ask him. He shall speak for himself. Let's grow up. Those words spake his parents, because they feared the Jews. For the Jews had agreed already that if any man did confess that he was Christ, that he was Mashiach, he should be put out of the synagogue. Therefore said his parents, He is of age as sin. Then again called they the man that was blind and said unto him, Give God the praise. We know that this man is a sinner. He answered and said, Whether he be a sinner or no, I know not. One thing I know, that whereas I was blind, now I see. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Then said they to him again, What did he to thee? 
He opened his, he, then said they to him again, what did he to thee? How opened he thine eyes? And he answered them, I have told you already, and you did not hear. Wherefore you hear it again. Will you also be his disciples? Then they reviled him and said, Thou art his disciple, but we are Moses' disciple. We'll just stop there. The point, I think, has already been made. It was on the Sabbath. And I believe verse 4 said, I must do this while the Sabbath. He said, I must do this work during the day before the Sabbath ends. Now, basically, the, the traditional interpretation of that scripture is I have to do this before I go to the cross. And I won't be able to do anything. But I believe he was referring to the Sabbath. So we know that the Sabbath is special. The Sabbath has been blessed, anointed, sanctified, set apart. And that because of this, it refreshes. It rejuvenates. It gives life. It gives healing. Yeah. Mark has a question saying, do we honor uh, the Sabbath by resting as Nehemiah desired? Or how exactly does Yeshua desire us to honor Shabbat? Nehemiah didn't rest on the Sabbath. He just didn't want the people to buy food. He didn't want them to conduct any type of commerce okay. on the Sabbath. There's no word. The word there is cease from your work. That's that's an, that's an incorrect interpretation. Nobody rested on the Sabbath. God did not rest on the Sabbath. He ceased from the work of peace. He ceased or finished the work of creating the world. That's all. And then on the seventh day, which was the Sabbath, that he set apart, sanctified, and blessed, and anointed his spirit something spiritually happened to renew him or that power maybe I shouldn't say renew I don't want to think that God needs to be renewed but the implication here the hint is or the clue is that there is something available on the Sabbath that will empower us and as we just heard Yeshua say, God works on the Sabbath, therefore I work. So scripture interprets scripture. When we read that in the Old Testament and we read this in the New Testament, we should interpret it as such. God finished the work of creating the world, of creating the heavens and the earth on Shabbat. Then he empowered it to be a recharging to us. But he works on the Sabbath, as Yeshua said. Therefore, he works. Amen? Amen. You know, so if someone says to me, uh, well, that seems like work, Rabbi. You conducting this movement and meditation class on the Sabbath. It's a healing class. It's, it's power evangelism. I'm trying to get people, you know, I want to pray for people. I want them to be healed. I want them to come into the kingdom. I want them to glorify God. The best time to do that is on the Sabbath. Now we see here a lot of people in Christianity have this Pharisaic spirit on them. Well, they, you know, they said he, you know, because he, they said he wasn't keeping the Sabbath. He must be, he's a sinner. He's from, he must be from the devil. Let's look at one more scripture. And I'm going to finish with this scripture. Psalms 11, that was good, by the way. Okay. Okay, let me. Do a little search here.
Let's take a look at Matthew chapter 12. And there we're at verse 26. Let's go up a little bit. Let's see. Look at begin at verse 22. Matthew chapter 12, verse 22. Alright. Then was brought unto him one possessed with a devil, blind and dumb, and he healed him, insomuch that the blind and dumb both spake and saw. And all the people were amazed and said, Is not this the son of David? But when the Pharisees heard it, they said, This fellow does not cast out devils but by Beelzebub, the prince of the devils. And Yeshua knew their thoughts and said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. And if Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. How shall then his kingdom stand? And if I by Beelzebub cast out devils, by whom do your children cast them out? Therefore shall be, therefore they shall be your judges. But if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God is come unto you. Or else how can one enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods, except he first bind the strong man, and then he will spoil his house. You know, basically Yeshua is saying Satan doesn't cast out Satan. Now this gives us a clue about sickness and disease. It's caused by Satan. It's caused remember we he told the you know the man by the pool, he said, uh, go and sin no more unless a, a worse thing come upon you. So sin comes as a result of sin. I mean, sickness comes as a result. Sickness and disease and infirmity comes as a result of sin. Whether it's your sin, whether it's your parents' sin, or your grandfather's or great great grandfather's and mother's sins, it is a result of sin. All sickness and disease is a result of sin. And who causes sin? Satan. Who causes sickness and disease? Satan. So Yeshua is saying Satan doesn't cast out Satan. In other words, all healings come from God. All healings come from Yeshua. If I heal, it can only be by the finger of God. Or else how could Satan's kingdom stand if he's divided against himself? It won't stand. Let's take a look at Mark Chapter 3, verse 23. Mark 3. In verse 1. Mark chapter 3. It's in verse uh, 23. Let's look at the synoptics on this and then we'll close. Let's go up a bit. 23, let's begin at begin at verse 22. And the scribes which came down from Jerusalem said, He hath Beelzebub. And by the prince of the devils cast it out he cast if he out devils. And he called them unto him, and he said unto them in parables, How can Satan cast out Satan? And if a kingdom be divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house be divided against itself, that house cannot stand. 
And if Satan rise up against himself and he be divided, he cannot stand, but hath an end. No man can enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods, except he first bind the strong man, and then he will spoil his house. Verily I say unto you all, all sins shall be forgiven unto the sons of men, and blasphemies wherewith soever they shall blaspheme. But he that shall blaspheme against the Holy Ghost have never forgiveness, but is in danger of eternal damnation. Again, we have the synoptic view of the same scripture. All healing comes from God. Satan cannot cast out Satan. Please look at verse 3. Because they said he had an unclean spirit, there came then his brethren and his mother, and standing without, sent unto him. Oh, we'll talk about it. We'll leave that. Satan cannot cast out Satan. people come here and they're healed, then it's the work of God. If people are healed by performing Tai Chi, Bagua, Zini, medical Qigong, and the eternal, not eternal, the inter, what it's called the internal martial arts, that's from God. It's not from the devil. I had someone say to me, uh, I asked them, are you coming to the class? They said, well, you know, I, I don't quite agree with that Tai Chi. But people are giving, to go on the internet, people are giving testimony of being healed by practicing Tai Chi and medical Qigong. That's from God. And as I've been teaching the past few weeks and months, it's because of what God set up back in Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, the breath of life, or the science of breathing, as I like to call it. All healing is from God. Now, if you want to be racist, because it's something that the Chinese came up with, you know, because this is something out of Africa, because it originated out of, you know, Egypt, out of the East. If you want to be racist and say, well, Western civilization didn't think of it first, uh, you know, and we forgot to steal it back when we first came across because we didn't see any significance in it. Therefore, now we're going to say it's demonic. Now, true enough, a lot of the people that practice it in China, you know, speaking about those in China, they're not Christian. And they probably do have some demonic influences over them because they're not Christian. And then in the West, the people who are, you know, unfortunately, the people who have open minds about things tend to be these new age folks. And they're discovering truths, but they're just going to the wrong source to get the information. You know, uh, we just, oh, that's new age. You know, that's the, that hippy-dippy stuff. You know, which is demonic in any way. And that's just simply not true. You know, these new ages and, you know, people in, in China, they're not tied down by, you know, centuries or thousands of years of religious bigotry and, and ritual. That's why I always tell you, you know, there aren't any rituals in our faith. There's no ritual. So people come here and they're healed. They're healed on the Sabbath. They're healed by practicing Tai Chi and meditating on the Word of God. That's from God. It can't be from any, any place else. So those who want to be like the Pharisees and condemn it, remember, you know, Yeshua here is saying that's, that's like blaspheming against the Holy Ghost. That's the impardonable sin. That's the only sin that there's no forgiveness for, according to the Bible. Let's look at Luke chapter 11, verse 18. Luke 
Luke chapter 11, verse 18. Get to say amen. amen. Okay. Um, let's begin here. Verse 14. And he was casting out a devil, and it was done. And it came to pass when the devil was gone out, the dumb spake, and the people wondered. But some of them said, he casteth out devils through Beelzebub, the chief of the devils. And others tempting him sought of him a sign from heaven. But he, knowing their thoughts, said unto them, Every king that divided against itself is brought to desolation. And a house divided against a house, and a house divided against a house falleth. If Satan also be divided against himself, how shall his kingdom stand? Because you say that I cast out devils through Beelzebub. And if I, by Beelzebub, cast out devils, by whom do your sons cast them out? Therefore shall they be your judges. But if I, with the finger of God, cast out devils, no doubt the kingdom of God is come upon you. When a strong man armed keepeth his palace, his goods are in peace. But when a stronger than he shall come upon him and overcome him, he taketh from him all his armor, wherein he trusted, and divideth his spoils. He that is not with me is against me. He that does not gather with me scattered. Yeshua said, I'm casting out demons by the finger of God. I'm healing by the finger of God, not by Beelzebub. You know, if you're not with me, then you, you're scattered. So anyone who is against the study of Tai Chi with the proper biblical foundations, and people being healed, you know, with what God has put here for us to be healed with. Farewell to you. God bless you. And we'll conclude, we'll conclude right there. And this will be our last service for, um, for today. And we will see you again next Friday on Shabbat at 7 p.m. And please come early to our meditation, our movement and meditation class, which will be um, at 5 p.m. And join us at 7 p.m. Oh, no, excuse me, at 7 a.m. Saturday morning, and 7 a.m. Sunday morning, and 7 a.m. Monday morning. And also tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. Super Bowl Sunday, we will still have our class at 7 a.m. Also on Monday morning at 7 a.m. These are just part of our ministry outreaches. Please uh, check them out. Go to our web pages at etzhaim.weebly.com. That's E-T-Z dot, excuse me, E-T-Z H-A-Y-I-M dot W-E-E-B-L-Y dot com. Etzhaim .weebly.com, go to uh, actstraining.weebly.com, that's A-C-T-S-T-R-A-I-N-I-N-G.weebly.com. Also check out our, our um, 
Transfer of Wealth Club, another one of our outreaches to help you get that free at the dominionteam.com, T H E D O M I N I O N T E A M.com, the dominionteam.com. And if you go to our uh, HIM, there will be links there uh, to our Ustream channel and also to our YouTube. So, to, you know, our YouTube um, channel as well. If you go, if you want to watch us live, go to our, our Ustream channel and just click on it and you'll be instantly connected to all our live broadcasts with, when we're having them. But if you, um, you know, can't make it live, can't be here in person, can't watch us live, then watch us, watch the recorded version on YouTube, on our YouTube channel. So let's check out all of our um, web pages, and there'll be various links that'll get you around. And don't forget our self-defense training that we offer Monday through Thursday from 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. here at 728 West Main Street, Jinx, Oklahoma, 74037. And if you want to be with us in person, that's the place to be. 728 West Main Street, Jinx, Oklahoma, 74037. Our mailing address is 8177 South Harvard Avenue, number 606, Tulsa, Oklahoma, 74137. Again, 8177 South Harvard Avenue, number 606, Tulsa, Oklahoma, 74137. Seven. Contact us by phone at area code 918-955-7971 and email us at tree underscore of underscore life at sbcglobal.net. That's T-R-E-E underscore O-F underscore life L-I-F-E at S-B-C Sandboy Cat global just like the globe g l o b a l dot net shabbat shalom